Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we are canning potatoes. Yes, good old, good old fashioned potatoes. These are golden potatoes. Um, I have about three pounds-ish of them that I need to get into jars. And so I thought I would bring you guys along for this project. I have my trusty cutting mat. I have my killer potato peeler. Like it'll take off layers of your hands. I have potatoes, of course, and a knife. Um, I have two bowls here. The bigger bowl is for the potatoes after I peel them. I'm just going to peel them and drop them in there. And I have a little bit of lemon juice in there to keep them from turning color. Okay. And then once I get them all peeled in, in there, then I'm going to take them and cut them up how I want. And I'm going to transfer them over to this bowl. So poof, here we go. I'm not going to drag you guys along for all of the peeling. That's kind of like watching paint dry on a very humid day. So I'll be back when the potatoes are. Woohoo! I got them all peeled. Yeah. Okay. So um, now I'm going to start cutting them up into the size that I want. While I've got that going on, I have a pot of water, a pot of water on the burner that I'm going to heat up um, because we need to blanch these. So um, I'm using golden potatoes. Okay. And I do that because they are less starchy. However, you can can regular old white potatoes. Um, with no problems, okay? They just, there will be a buildup of starch in the jar. So it's not a bad thing. You just, when you crack open the jar, you rinse them with water a couple of times, get all that starchy water out of there, you're good to go, okay? What do you use canned potatoes for? Oh, I'm so glad you guys asked. I'm so glad. Okay, so canned potatoes will make the gummiest, gummiest, G-U-M-M-Y, I-E-S-T, that's not right. <laughs> the gummiest um, mashed potatoes you've ever had, really. They're, they're not good for mashed potatoes on their own. You can add to them like instant mashed potatoes and that will make them less gummy. They are still not my favorite for mashed potatoes. So, um, but they are great for soups. They are great for stews. They are great for making potato soup, um, for beef stew. Remember, I'm an ingredient canner, right? So while I have made um, beef stew before in a jar, for me, it just makes more sense and is easier for me to can the ingredients, okay? So I will can the roast, which you've seen me do, and I will can the carrots, and I will can the potatoes. And then all of it's ready to go whenever you want. All you have to do is combine it, grab some of your beef stock, make some gravy, poof! Dinner is done, and I, you are a rock star. The family loves you. You love yourself. Life is good because you had all of this done and ready ahead of time, okay? So that is my preference, is to have the ingredients. Um, I have taken these potatoes and drained them, rinsed them off really good, uh, oiled them up and put them in the air fryer. They turn out pretty good. Yes, they do. They turn out pretty good. So I do like air frying them. Making sure that you rinse them and oil them properly for the air fryer is um, important. Okay. Otherwise, you will be trying to scrape them off of your air fryer. So we have these almost done here. These need to be blanched for uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay? So we're going to do that, a nice quick blanch. In the meantime, I'm also going to add, let me, sh let me show you here. So there's the taters, okay? Canning pot. There's my pot of water that I'm going to blanch in. And I have another pot that I'm going to get ready with hot water because once we put these in the jar, um, I'm going to top off the jar with fresh liquid. Not the liquid that these have soaked in um, and not the liquid that you blanch with because that will have too much starch in it. Okay, so I just put the potatoes in there. I'm going to let those go for 10 minutes, set my timer. Then I'm going to strain them and start stuffing jars. Okay, so we strained them. They're in here. They are hot. So we'll see how this works. But I'm going to use my ladle and I'm going to fill the jar. Okay. And then you want an inch headspace. So we may be adding some more as we go. Let's do this. There we go. And we are going to be debubbling, so I anticipate adding, you know, one or two. And I left these fairly decent sized chunks of potatoes because I, 
didn't want them to, I didn't want to risk getting them too mushy. And the golden potatoes, like I said, are a lot less starch, so to me they always seem to get softer faster. But they make the purtiest stuff. Okay, so now, let's see if I can do this. Oop, leave that one on, that one off. Okay, so I have my hot, hot fresh water, and we are going to take that and fill the jars. Okay, there we go, an inch headspace. As you can tell, this will take me a little bit because I'm going to have to heat up more water. But I wanted to get these first three and show you what's happening. So I'm going to fill these with the water. Now, this is where preferences come into play, okay? Because you'll see that some canners will put salt. They'll add salt to their jars. You'll see some will add onion soup mix. You'll see some. I've added, I've added just about everything you can think of, okay? Um, but you don't have to. That is all preference. The only thing that you have to have in that jar is potatoes and water. And your potatoes, for aesthetic purposes, <laughs> need to be under the water. Um, so if you're if they're sticking up above, you know, I would try to do what you can to get them down below. So you want to go through. You want to debubble. Make sure you've got no trapped air in there. Very important. And another thing that is all the rage right now on YouTube is people who are quote dry canning their potatoes and that is that's not good when they say dry canning what they're doing is they're not putting the liquid they're making spears of potatoes filling the jar with them putting the lid on and canning them okay so the approved time and methods from the national center for food preservation include the liquid the liquid helps get the heat that kills the microorganisms, <laughs> okay, in the vegetable that grows in the ground and kills it. So, oh, don't dry can. Just, you know, just don't. I can come up with no good reason to ever dry can. Vacuum sealing is vacuum sealing. Dry canning is a waste of precious resources, okay? So, those were, in, they stayed in inch head space. I didn't have to add any more to them. Potatoes are in there, the lids are on, did not have to soak them because that's just not necessary anymore. Rings are on finger tight. The canner has been heating up. And so I am going to pop these into the canner and I will be back when all the jars are completed and I'll show you what's up. Okay, here we have eight pints of beautiful golden potatoes all ready to rock and roll. When you are doing potatoes, you can do them in pints or quarts. Pints you do for 35 minutes, quarts you do for 40 minutes, and that is with 11 pounds of pressure at my elevation or 10 pounds with the gauge. So be sure to check your elevation and know what your elevation is and that will tell you what your pressure should be. So we're going to get this on and bring it up to a steady st stream of steam and then we will put the weight there on. she blows okay set that timer for 10 minutes okay, so 10 minutes has happened and we are now going to put that on we're going to let it come up to a nice rocking hula dance ignore this if you have this ignore this okay and once that starts doing its hula we're going to turn down the heat to regulate it we're going to let that happen for 35 minutes Okay, it's been a couple minutes since it depressurized. So, I'm going to get them out of the pot. Now, a lot of people have issues um, with siphoning if they don't let it sit in the pot for five minutes. Um, and that's because the pot is so warm and the water is so warm. And when you pull it out into the air, it cools off rapidly. And right now, uh, with the air conditioning, it's about 73 degrees in the house, and so I'm kind of afraid of that occurring, but we will see. Okay, so here we have, look at all those bubbles. That is awesome. Very happy with these. So remember, when you go to use these, you're going to want to drain the liquid and rinse it out. 
Okay, these are great for uh, frying in the air fryer. These are great for roasting. These are great for soup. This is some of the best potato soup you'll ever eat. And it's all the hard work's done. The potatoes are done. So absolutely fantastic. And a great way to put up either your harvest from your garden or a really great sale on potatoes. Because you know, right now, uh, with the holidays coming up, potatoes will be at really, really good prices. Isn't that great? Look at that. Let me see if I can get you focused in. Look at all those bubbles. The headspace is dead on. I'm very happy. These did not buckle. There's a ping, but that's from the Bernardin jar. Let's see if we can get one to happen from the Orchard Road while we're sitting here. So here I have eight beautiful pints of potatoes that we will enjoy later on this year. Let me see if I can get you set up right. And uh, those will be added to the shelves sometime tomorrow night. I'm going to let them sit out overnight, come to room temperature, check all the seals, pull off the rings, wash the jars, put them up on the shelves after I mark them with the year. I just did these with plain water. You can, like I said before, use onion soup mix with water. You can add salt. You don't have to, oh, did you hear that? You don't have to add salt. You can add chicken broth, beef broth, however you want to can your potatoes. Um, just remember no dairy and no grain, okay? No flour, no rice, no nothing like that. Okay, I hope this was helpful and I hope that you give canning potatoes a chance. Remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until the next time, everybody, please be safe.